Some losses are set to be devastating, crushing, you name the adjectives. Are some losses more difficult to bounce back from, in your opinion, and over the course of your career? Uh, yeah. Our situation definitely matters how the game went and how quickly you can turn the page. But most guys, um, when they get to this level, when you show up to that next game and that next game day and you're able to uh, kind of look at, that, at what's ahead, um, that transition happens pretty naturally. But it's uh, sometimes you lose a little sleep um, the night after tough losses. That's just kind of how, you know, part of the game because how bad you want it and how close you can get. But uh, it's, it's also easy to turn the page when you get back into that environment. And who do you lean on in this situation if you go through a tough loss? Who do you turn to? I mean, win or loss, I try to keep things outside of the arena and outside of uh, what I do here in my job in the right perspective. So with my family, things that you do outside of basketball, uh, I try to keep you know the same and enjoy them as much, whether it's a win or a loss. So um, got to have the right perspective through all this craziness, for sure. Greg on the left. Uh, Greg Logan, Newsday. Uh, Steph, a lot of times in game one, uh, LeBron got the switch as he wanted, and you had to take him repeatedly. Can you just describe how difficult that was, and do you think you guys have to do something different this time uh, around to try and control him? Draymond talked about playing with more force. I think that was the biggest takeaway watching the film in game one is not only did he have an amazing game and score 51, um, but the, there wasn't much resistance in that first half uh, with our with our switches, uh, with our help side defense, you know, picking him up uh, with yeah with force and and kind of assertiveness on the defensive end. Whether he scores or not, he's he's still a great player. But um, we got to be a little bit more aggressive, um, and that doesn't mean changing our game plan at all. It just means doing things a little bit faster, a little bit more physical. Um, and just trying to make you know not just him but everybody else more comfortable. I mean, more uncomfortable out there on the floor uh, to start the game. And I think we can do that. And if I could follow up, you still had a great offensive game. Can you just describe the difficulty of what you did? You know, trying to stay with him on one end and keep pace with, on the scoring at the other end. Uh. Every, for seven games last series, that's what I had to do. So uh, it's a kind of a con constant theme and pattern that I'm pretty much used to. So um, not going to slow me down at all. If you want to try to pick on me on defense, I'm going to hold my own and I'm going to come right back at you. So that's uh, kind of par for the course right there. Thanks. Got Over my golf side. reference in. Nice. Um, Stephen, did you feel the game one was going to turn out that way? Do you like the competitive rivalry that has been building up throughout the finals? Or after playing four consecutive, does it make it boring? Definitely not boring at all. We're f playing for a championship, and this is you know, the most fun you have playing the game of basketball. So uh, you know, playing a, a, the same team four times has... Uh, I think there, I mean, there's a lot of consistencies that you can kind of fall back on and experience. But when you get here on the stage, everything is just fresh. It's new. It's it's exciting, and um, we're three now, three wins away from winning another championship. So it's an amazing feeling, and uh, we want to enjoy every single moment of this for sure. Joe in the middle. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. Steph, we should ask Steve this, and we didn't. Um, but from your interactions with him, how's Clay today? Uh, from what I saw, he's looking pretty, pretty good, pretty happy, pretty upbeat. Uh, he obviously didn't do much on the floor, but doesn't really need to Only worry about, you know, five o'clock tomorrow. So hopefully he'll get some more treatment and recovery and, and, uh, keep making progress. Um, if I was betting, I'd say Clay was playing just based on who he is and his, uh, his attitude today for sure. This side and the left. Uh, Stephen Connor Letourneau, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, when when KD has a game like he did in Game One, do you need to say anything afterward, or do you just kind of let him, you know, figure it out on his own? And are you confident that he'll get back into a rhythm for Game Two? 
Uh, we're all victims of our the expectations that we set. So, I mean, the fact that you're saying Katie had a bad game is it's kind of kind of funny. Just you know, with what you expect from him every single night, but. Uh, we are all in this together. There's not much anybody has to go over and have an intervention type of situation or say anything besides, hey, let's go get game two and everybody needs to show up and, and play their best. And so uh, that's been the communication around the whole team uh, these last two days, watching film, everybody's engaged, you know, calling stuff out. Um, and I like that type of vibe when everybody's – you know, not 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 complacent. We uh, we know we 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 won game one by the skin of our teeth, and now we got to go play better, take control of the series, and and Kay's gonna have a huge part in that for sure. Steph on your right, third uh, row. Michael Lee, Yahoo Sports. Uh, Steph, this is the fourth time you've seen these guys, and obviously at the end of game one, there was Tristan and Draymond, and you and LeBron had a couple words for each other. But it's like there's a lot of hatred here. How have you guys been able to compete for the same thing so many times, but? still just be competitive without really crossing the line? This is just basketball. Um, I mean, part of the game, part of that competitive environment, when somebody's in your way of, you know, of holding the trophy, there's going to be a little animosity and a little uh, edginess, if you will. But uh, at the end of the day, it's basketball. And we're, we're playing for 48 minutes to, to win a game. And... Um, if you can leave it out there on the floor, not take anything you know too personally. Um, we're not holding hands and singing songs as, as friends. We're, we're, we're enjoying the competitive environment. Um, I think that's that's the consistent thing between our two teams. And obviously, we see each other twice a year during the regular season, and then you know, wait till June. So there's not a lot of face to face time throughout the season. Maybe that has something to do with it, but. Uh, right now, it's just about winning a championship. You don't want to let anything distract us from that on the floor. Janie, up front. Steph, uh, Janie McCauley from Associated Press. You, you've spoken often about being part of the transformation of this franchise from losing into contending every year and um, and how hard it is to do it. H how much pride do you take in that? And what, what dynasties did, do you most appreciate who've done it for you know so long and been able to win? Uh, the second question, I don't know, just as a fan of the NBA, you can go down the list of the teams that have won multiple years and you know, just dominated the league for stretches of time. But what we've been able to do here um, from my rookie year, winning 23 games, I think it was, to 28, to the lockout year, winning 20-something, and then making the playoffs and kind of you know taking a small step every year until we you know 2015 and winning our first championship. It's, it's uh, it is a sense of pride around that, um, being the elder statesman here and uh, you know seeing what has all gone into to being on this stage every single year. When it comes to you know the guys that I get to suit up with every single night. Uh, from Bob Myers to, you know, all down to the coaching staff to ownership. Like, it's just a transformation that I got to see firsthand um, and every all the details that went into it. So at some point when this is all said and done, um, I hope to kind of just sit back and really truly appreciate from start to finish all that went into it. But um, there is an awareness of – where we were to where we are um and and i appreciate that's why i think i when i get to this stage it's always like it's it's brand new because of how hard it was to get here in the first place thank you steph